Well, I think only has a few million. I think. You know. Yeah, I guess that's true. Yeah. So they'll have to up their game yeah. a little bit if they want to compete. But that's that's how we'll do it. And we've done that very recently with a, a new uh, with a new um, program we had to distribute uh, lab fees. And um, my counterpart at UCLA, Roberto Pache, can attest that we were pretty successful in getting that out and getting a lot of proposals in. Stuart, you're going to clarify on the Canadian side. On, on the Canadian side, we would we would uh, distribute directly to the universities that are, are participants in uh, in CSIP. We would also use networks such as AUCC to distribute more broadly to the university community. Uh, we also piggyback uh, with NSERC on on some of their announcements that go out. We have our own internal networks that we use to distribute. Uh, um, as well as uh, we use National Research Council, both the institute structure and IRAP uh, to distribute uh, across Canada. So there's not many niches that we don't hit with the, the uh, process we use to distribute uh, calls for proposals. And if I may add, sort of on behalf of the steering committee, just uh, one of the things that we will be endeavoring to ensure is that there is a uh, a level of uh, consistency and coordination across the, the, the two processes. Over here. How will the proposals be evaluated? In the case of the University of California, we will set up a peer review, um, probably a face-to-face -face peer review. It depends on the number of proposals we get. Um, if it's a small, you know, it's a finite, accountable number, we'll be able to do it face-to-face. Pretty rapidly, but that's the that's the system that we find is is best to tease out the highest quality uh, proposals. Uh, if we get a lot of proposals, my preference is the stairwell gravity method. Um, but as we're not expecting that many, uh, ISTP Canada uses uh, an expert evaluation system where we we call upon experts in the field. Um, of the proposals, uh, generally minimum of three, but we seek uh, more than that uh, if we can get them readily um, to evaluate the projects. Then uh, those would be reviewed by the ultimately by the steering committee, who would make the final decision on the the combining of the two evaluations, the one from California and the, and the one from Canada. Okay, over there. Aside from universities and private enterprise, are the uh, is the not-for-profit sector also eligible? I think is the question. Well, I think in the case of the University of California, since we're spending UC money, we will, I'm sure, we will insist that the principal investigators at least be from a UC campus. Uh, of course, we very much want collaborations from the national laboratories that we also manage: Livermore, Los Alamos, and, and Lawrence Berkeley. Um, but they, they can work very well within coll with collaborative relationships with UC faculty. I, I would not want to be restrictive if someone at, I don't know, Merced, say, decides that they need, they have a, a dynamite proposal involving either nonprofits or, or perhaps even for-profit companies. I, I think we'd want to take a look at it. These are big problems. Uh, I, I think it would be arrogant to assume they're going to just be solved by, you know, a particular set of researchers. So we'll want... We'll want to have some broad thinking, but I think that, that the people in charge at least should come from the campuses because that's the way we'd like to uh, fund our faculty. Back there. Uh, yeah, so I have a question in regards to uh, making this information available. What about the policy that you mentioned earlier about the institutions and the private sector? Uh, why not use the works to get it out to the Canadian uh, private sector? I think that's a question. Yeah, that's a question to Stuart. Why not? There's a system that's used for uh, for procurement. Uh, more. Yeah. Stuart. Uh, I I think that's an excellent suggestion. I would just qualify one or respond to one comment. This is the, the funding on the Canadian side is is comes from some from Department of Foreign Affairs and the rest from the universities that are, are participants uh, in the in the uh, CSIP. So it's not all government money. But your point is well taken, and we will look at at uh, distributing through the Mercs as well. Yeah. Okay. Any more? Oh, one more question. Where is it? Over there. Not related, but I just wanted to remind you if you announce the cell phone. I, I got it right here. I'm getting to it. 
<laughs> okay, uh, with that then, I'll draw this part of the meeting to a close.